Hey, my name is Jacob Schwartz. I'm a creative director here at Mystery Box. We're in our beautiful studio down here near Salt Lake City, Utah. Today we have the amazing opportunity to talk about the new PA32DC OLED ASUS monitor. Over the last 10 years, we've specialized in taking technology to new limits through whether that be through robotics, virtual productions, or even practical effects. We're always looking for tools that can help us serve our clients' creative needs. And this monitor has definitely found its place inside of our toolkit. They've really taken a lot of care to improve the ergonomics of this monitor so that it's a lot easier to carry around on set and to take where we need it to go and to make it a much more portable solution. Ports on the side, auto calibration, and feet that can twist out of the way so that we can just keep moving and moving. Today I wanted to kind of walk you guys through some of the use cases and some of the benefits that it's kind of offered us. As we've seen HDR become more accessible, and we've also seen filmmakers slowly adapting that technology and utilizing it in their storytelling. OLED offers amazing advantages to filmmakers as it allows us to see true blacks and also true color representations due to the fact that each individual pixel is self-illuminated. When you're doing HDR, you need to make sure that you have a monitor that actually can convey correctly that dynamic range so that you are making creative decisions appropriately. This OLED is very impressive. It caps out at about 500 nits. If you're mastering for Netflix or you're mastering for any of the streaming services, you're mastering your footage at 1,000 nits max. You need to be able to have a monitor that allows you to see from zero to 1,000 nits or allows you to see close to that. How does that work with a 500 nit display? ASUS did an incredible job at trying to take this technology and allow you to properly represent up to a thousand nit count image within that 500 nit retainer, right? So they have three different cool settings. So if you go inside the monitor and you go into your HDR mode, so we're in HDR PQ Rec 2020, there's three different types of PQ curves. There's optimized, clip, and basic. What these different PQ curve options are doing is allowing you to see more of the dynamic range within a smaller window. So it's basically taking the 1,000 nits and reallocating that over 500 nits. One of the misconceptions about HDR is new color and mastering HDR, everything has to be bright, everything has to be vibrant. That's not the case. HDR is just another tool in your toolkit as a filmmaker to help tell your story. And so utilizing it to improve your storytelling is what you need to consider at every decision you make in the HDR workflow. Right here we have a video from when we did a collaboration with ASUS for a launch of a different monitor, which is called Neon Forest, which is available on Jacob and Katie Schwartz's YouTube channel. So if you look at this image, what we can see from the histogram, this right here is our 100 nit count line, right? You can tell I'm not going much above the 100 nit count. This could have easily been an SDR finish and no one would have felt the difference. However, what you do see is just right above between 100 and 1000 nit, there is a little bit of specular that is going on that is allowing the audience to feel something. But what's also great about HDR and especially this OLED display is that I can see almost every single detail between zero nits and one to 10. All of that information is here and all of it's properly represented. The way you have to work with HDR is not like the way you work with SDR where you say, okay, I'm gonna take the histogram and I'm gonna take my shadows and gammas and I'm just gonna stretch them so my whites are as close to white and my blacks are as close to black. So now what you have to do as a filmmaker, as you're considering utilizing HDR, is to understand where you can place stuff to make it have the most impact. We have great blacks, great representation of blacks. We have specular highlights. This is more of a cinematic approach. And I know a lot of you filmmakers out there are also natural history documentarians where you don't have total control of the light. I'm actually gonna pull up a place that we just recently went to in Alaska. So this is Alaska, this is natural history kind of stuff. Again, I'm not totally maxing out the full length of what HDR can do. I'm keeping it around 900 to 800 nits because I felt like that was the most accurate representation of the footage that we captured. But this one, you can see I'm going a little bit more in the blacks. But you can also see how great this actually looks. Is I can actually see all that fine detail. Like Even though you might not be able to see it on the monitor there, come check out the YouTube link of this video. But you can actually see like all the single detail, like every single piece of water and speck of water, I can actually see. With SDR, you would have flattened that all out. Even though this is a dark area, I can actually see that there's rocks, there's, there's detail, and there's information all the way back inside of there. So that's really cool. So a few days ago, we had the amazing opportunity to shoot an incredible dancer here in our studio.
This is actually how we saw the image on set. You can see that we had a great specular highlights. I didn't lose any of the information here. We have a great turns and curves. With HDR, there's a new way you have to think about contrast. Typically, when you think of contrast, you're stretching the image or compressing the image. But with HDR, you actually need to do that with every single zone. And that's why the HDR tools set inside of Resolve is so cool, is because I can individually go into each one of those zones and then manipulate it so that between zones, I can create contrast. But then overall, I don't have to have like a super contrasty image. But between my highlights and my speculars, I can have a little bit more contrast between those. But I don't want as much between my blacks and my shadows, because obviously, I want to be able to see the details of his face. Thank you guys so much for your time. Today we kind of just briefly went over some of the tools and tips and tricks that I use in my HDR workflow and how especially this new PA32 DC monitor actually helps me in my workflow. Again, we're super grateful that you know ASUS has built a monitor, listened to us filmmakers. So thank you ASUS so much for building such a great monitor, allowing us to be a part of this launch, and we appreciate you guys all for being a part of this. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.